to go. We have to get out of here. Lives. We have to go. Oh, no, we have to get out of here. Please just get me out of this. Run fast as you can. It's a thing Lincoln didn't understand, or maybe want to understand, is that for a man like Sammy, there's always gonna be more Haitians. Now, if there wasn't someone going after Sammy, then there was someone else forcing him into a bad situation. It was never going in. That's how Lincoln ended up working for Sal Marcano. You were right about those Haitians being down by that old salt mine. They won't be bothering us again. It was a mistake sending you down there. I should handle my own business. This isn't any different than what I was doing before I left. You probably don't know this. But every night on the TV, right after the news, they show the names of all the boys killed over there in Vietnam. I'd be sitting in the kitchen eating my supper, watching that list scroll by, wondering if today is the day I finally see your name. But you never did. Nothing happened to me. There's only so much luck down the well. Sooner or later, I pull up that bucket, there's nothing in it. So, what are we gonna do about Marcano? Damn, his goddamn money one way or the other. Lottery gonna be enough to cover it? The lottery? <laughs> no. But Sal called a bit ago. Wants you to meet him up the country club. Says he's got something in the works. Square things up between us. The only black folk allowed in there to help. Now, they may not like it, but they're not gonna say no to Sal Marcano. He says you get to come in, you get to come in. Fine. Always did want to see the inside of that place. You need to do whatever Sal asks, yeah? For all our sakes. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Gilbert. You've got enough to bring me full thermos of coffee from downtown's own tasty patisserie. Mm. Just hits the spot. You all out there know what I'm talking about. This you do. Oh, and Nancy wanted me to remind you that Tasty Patisserie is still filling orders for king cakes for the upcoming Mardi Gras festivities. Now you tell her Remy sent you, and if you buy two, get one free. Can't beat that? So go on over there and tell her I sent you. Hmm. I know, I know, I'm not supposed to enjoy my coffee on air. <laughs> oh, Gilbert's turning red, folks. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, we like to have our fun here, isn't it? And that's what Mardi Gras is gonna be all about. Good old-fashioned New Bordeaux F-U-E. And if I sound a little enthusiastic, well, I'm sorry about it. But I am. I've talked before about being honored to be part of the crew of knights for the 10th year run. We got a heck of a float plan for y'all, and we have spared no expense in strutting Austin. Now, this will be my first crew since my daddy died last year. Dear listener, you know how important Mardi Gras was to him. God rest his soul, he was one of the crew of Knight's Founders. He was captain for more years than I can remember, and daddy was Rex back in 1932, for those of you whose memories go all the way back then. Oh, you know, I'll tell you, he'd spend weeks, that months, preparing. More than anything else, it was the tradition, the feeling of being part of something, of this city that he loved so. My father believed that every man had his role to play, and every role contributed to the greater whole. 
those reds over in Russia, even the ones here at home, they try to sell that as equality. <laughs> no, sir. There's always going to be a king. And each king has his day. Mm. I'll tell you, that coffee sure is fine. On the next episode, you better believe we're going to talk about this here story that President Johnson is considering a deal with the Russians to scale back our nuclear program. We'll get to that and a lot more right here. Native son. The fuck you doing up here? Help goes into the back. I'm, uh, I'm here to see Mr. Marcano. The name's Lincoln Clay. That a fact? I'll be goddamned. Mind your manners while you're in there, boy. Or there'll be hell to pay, you hear? Park over to the side. Ho, ho, ho! Lincoln Clay! Christ, man, get a look at you! I bet those fucking gooks shit themselves when they saw you coming. Been a long time, Georgie. Oh, no shit, it's been a long time. I think the last time I saw you was that night over in the French Ward, right before you shipped out. <laughs> Damn it, that wasn't a gas. Oh, I seem to remember me and Ellis running from the cops, uh, and Danny ending up in the drunk tank. Hell, man, I bailed him out. Besides, just worth it to knock the hell out of them cracker assholes. <laughs> Smoke? Sure. <laughs> oh, man. Sammy said Mr. Marcano wanted to see me. Mr. Marcano? Shit. Make him sound like a goddamn lawyer. You just call him Sal. Come on, he's in the back. <laughs> Sal. I should have wore something else. Hey, these squares have a problem with Joe Trez. You can take it up with my old man. He'll tell him to kiss his ass. <laughs> nice thing about having fuck you money. Olivia, I hate to cut this short, darling, but I've got a meeting coming up. Remy, a pleasure as always, sir. Two more glasses. <laughs> Lincoln, good to see you. This is Vito Scaletta. He's the one I've been telling you about. Come on, Lincoln, sit down. So you served in Vietnam, huh? Yes, sir. Sal tells me uh, you're on a few pieces of tin over there. Well, I served with some good men. Nothing I did would happen without them. Army? Marines? Regular army at first, and then I was recruited to the 5th SFG. Special Forces. I told you it was something else. Now, not that anything's gonna go wrong, but just in case, goddamn, don't you want a man like that on your side? Well, if you're vouching for him, Sal, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Look, I got a couple things to take care of. Thanks for the drink. Christ, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> Fucking carpetbagger. Commission sent him down here from Empire Bay about 15 years back. He's been a pain in my goddamn ass ever since. Well, I guess you're wondering what this is all about. Yeah, Sammy didn't tell me too much. Twice a year, the feds take old money out of circulation and destroy it. Over the course of the next few days, that money's gonna be delivered here to the reserve in town. And you're gonna hit one of those shipments? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. We are gonna use that occasion to gain access to their vault. And then steal everything that ain't nailed down. <laughs> Should be six, seven million in there? Easy. <laughs> that's, that's pretty fucking ballsy. <laughs> it's a chance of a goddamn lifetime is what it is. Now, Vito's fronting a lot of the money for the job, and he got us the combination to the vault. Have you had a chance to see Danny? No, not yet. Oh, well, you will. We brought him and his old man in on this. And they're gonna need your help, so go see them. They're still in that same place. There's something else we gotta talk about. Now, it's safe to assume you know about the problem Sammy's been having. I took care of the Haitians. Once things settle down, money will start coming in again. You see that right there? That's what I'm talking about. You didn't sit around with your thumb jammed in your ass. You saw a problem, you went out and took care of it. God damn, I take that over money any day of the week. We pay our own way, debts and all, always have. Oh, hell, son, I know that. I wouldn't expect otherwise. But you know, even after we all evened up, you're still gonna be slopping around in the ass end of this city. Not much of a future in that. 
but maybe there's a different way forward, you understand? For all of us. What'd you have in mind? I want you to know I mean no disrespect when I say this. Sammy's a hell of a man, but he's not getting any younger. And I'm thinking it's time to make a change. Well, I don't think that Ellis is ready for that kind I'm of not experience. talking about Ellis. I'm talking about you. I want you to run the holler. <laughs> I can't do that. Well, look here, if you're worried about Sammy, don't, you understand? Now, he's always been on the level with me. And this job we're talking about, there's more than enough for him to retire on. He took me in when I had nowhere else to go. He treated me like a son. I'm sorry, Mr. Marcano, I, I can't do that to him. Well, shit, son. I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't just a little disappointed. But I get it. You're loyal, which is something that is scarce these days. Do you still want me to help with this thing we've been talking about? <laughs> you goddamn right I do! <laughs> and when it's all done, you all be more than square with me. You have my word. <laughs> what do you really want to hear? That we kidnap and torture anyone suspected of working with the VC? I'm trying to ascertain the level of training that Lincoln Clay received during his time in Vietnam. Someone like that you don't need to train. You point them in the right direction, you get the fuck out of their way. <coughs> Can't see a goddamn thing. Neither can we keep looking. Gotta be here somewhere. Stay cool. Just we'll get through this. <coughs> Motherfuckers. I got eyes on the suspect. You gotta box him in. He's right there. Got him. Suspect's on the move. Get me out of here. Need to get behind. It's a goddamn massacre! Driving it down. We'll make it quick. Motherfuckers killed the lights. Just worry about the money. I'll deal with this. Trying to flush this out. Stay focused on what you're doing. Jesus, you hear that? Hell oh, yes. Ain't those the guards there claiming to be from Baton Rouge? <sighs> Killed another cop. Oh, this is how I'm gonna get promoted. Oh. Oh.
God damn it, those guards will cut us down the second we make a break for it. Tell Danny he needs to get us out of here. And these bastards got us pinned down. Y'all need to figure something out. I got some TNT. I'll put on our side of the hole and detonate it. What the fuck is that gonna accomplish? With any luck, it'll blow a hole big enough for y'all to drop down. With any luck, Danny, do you even know what the fuck you're doing? Come on, it's dynamite. How complicated could it be? It's lit. Get the fuck away from the hole. No one really knows why Sal Marcano turned on Thomas Burke, uh, but he took Point Verdun from him and gave it to an enforcer named Roman the Butcher Barbieri, who promptly busted up one of Burke's legs. Now, Danny Burke was part of the heist crew. I mean, he was a gearhead, had never done anything like this before, but Thomas Burke insisted. He figured if the heist was a success, Sal would forgive him and return Point Verdun. Penetrator, all right. <laughs> hey, now I heard there ain't nothing sweeter than Vietnamese pussy. You tell me it's true. <laughs> Casanova Clay. Shit, man, it's so fucking good to see you. You too, Danny. That's Nikki. God, she wanted to be here, but I ain't remember how old. Oh, God damn, you piece of shit. Yeah, unfortunately. Come on, let's grab a beer. Wait for the old man to chill out, and then we can get down to it. Yeah. What's up, man? I already got it all set up and organized. All the girls going to be there and everything, except we just got to go in my cars because we can't roll up in that beat-up piece of shit outside. <laughs> oh, you didn't just call my all-American machine a beater. I'm just saying, there are better rides out there. Hey, bullshit there are. This car's a beast. I dropped the custom 358 in before we shipped out. That ain't the only thing you dropped in there. Maybe you should tell them about how you'd borrow it from Ellis and take the ladies for a ride. <laughs> Hell, man, leave me out of this. Wait, you fucking my car? Mm -hmm. Nah, it ain't no big deal. I was always wrapped up tight. <laughs> Besides, I already got one fucking bass in my life. I don't need another one. All right, you know what? You're going to clean it. Not just the back oh. seat. Every square inch. I don't need to be riding around sitting in your shit. Hey, and you, funny man, you going to fucking help. Like the hell I am, shit, I didn't get any. Yeah, well, it's just new. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you fucking jokers got about as much chance of pulling this off as I do at winning a goddamn decathlon. Oh, all right, Dad, we hear you. Danny and Ellis, you're gonna use the drills to cut a hole up through the bottom of the vault. You and Georgie, you'll be inside. You're gonna drop the money down, then get the hell out of there. That goddamn drill ain't easy to move, though. So we need a boat, to get it through the canals and into position. Well, Ellis and I worry about the boat. See, George's old man flipped the guard at the reserve, giving you his truck. <laughs> <laughs> Between that and the uniforms, and no one gonna give us a second look. <laughs> Come on, let's get moving. Still gotta swing by Skeletters and finish up some prep work. Hey, and you two assholes, don't think this gets you off the hook when it comes to my car. Y'all best get ready to clean it. I ain't cleaning shit. Hey, you cleaning it. My father was a lot of things, few of them good. But he started out smuggling moonshine, so he knew about the canals underneath the city, and that one of them went right under the Federal Reserve. It was his idea to use a boat to move the drill into position. He was a real son of a bitch, my father. More than anyone else, I blame him for what happened. You want to stick your own neck out, fine. But leave your son out of it. It's his fault Danny died. Is everyone in? We need to go. We're in here, go! Call the hands of me and everybody out of the phone! Guys, come down through the hall! Fuck, poor guys, we need to get the fuck out of here! Motherfuckers! Cops cutting off our escape route! 